I live in a large city in Canada where I go to the university downtown. I take the land rail train back and forth between home and campus. It's usually a 15 minute walk between the train station and my house, but I need to cut between an apartment building scheduled for demolishment and then a very tiny stretch of trees in order to reach the path that runs behind the tracks. My train station is next to a rec facility used for volleyball and basketball. The train is a partially underground and partially above ground, and I get off at the station directly across from my university. However, it is often quite sketchy as it is downtown, and my city is quite well known for a crime rate. I'm a sciences student and I often find myself in the lab until later in the evening. Because it's winter and further north than most Canadian cities, it gets dark really early. I usually call my mom or boyfriend in my walk to the train station as I've had several creepy encounters in the past. One of which I was waiting at the light across the street to the train, and a homeless man approached me and got really close to my face. At the time, my mom was in my headphones, so she heard him say, You have really pretty eyes. It was almost comedic when my mom said, Run, in the same tone as the song where the beat drops after run. Luckily for me, there were other students present and it never escalated after he had walked away, and I just muttered it quiet, Thanks, and I shuffled away from him. Now everyone who takes public transit in a large city knows that there is your fair share of homeless and druggies that you really just avoid eye contact with and continue on. This experience that I'm going to tell you about was much more serious and a lot more sinister. One morning in the dead of winter, I was walking to the train station around 11. There were a lot of people walking so I felt pretty secure and didn't pay too much attention to the man and the long black coat and grey gloves that was walking in the same direction as me after the abandoned apartment buildings. I boarded the train along with another dozen people. It wasn't until that night that I realized I probably should have been paying closer attention. I had a late lab so I took the nearby empty train home well after rush hour. It was about 8.30 or 9pm so it was dark and there was a decent amount of snow coming down. I got off the train at my stop along with a group of young people, with the logo of the university that trains at the nearby rec facility. They also got off the train and were walking to the building in clumps. I didn't notice the man from that morning immediately because, as I started on my path, I was looking at my phone to call my mom for the walk. I should have been paying more attention because I didn't actually notice him until he stepped directly in front of me to intercept me along the path. I looked up startled. The man was wearing a long black wool coat, grey mittens and a grey toque. He looked to be in his late twenties to mid thirties and had a closely trimmed brown beard and brown hair that stuck out from under his toque. He smiled at me but his blue eyes looked cold despite it. I immediately started running through my imaginary scenarios on what to do and took a quick glance over my shoulder to the university athletes, who were almost to the rec center, and steadily getting further away from me. The man and I were very nearly alone. He said to me, You're very pretty to be out so late. Where are you headed to? My heart dropped. I really wish that I was witty or good at thinking fast on my feet because all I said was, Nowhere. He acted as if I didn't say anything and took a step towards me, still smiling that creepy smile of white death and dead, cold eyes. I can walk you home if you like. I just stared at him in horror and continued. You live that way, don't you? And he pointed in the direction of my shortcut through the trees by the old apartment buildings. At this point, it clicked that this man had followed me from the apartments to the train this morning. He knew which station that I would get off at and which path to wait for me on my way home. All I knew at this point was that I could not let this man know where I live, and I couldn't go home through the isolated shortcut where he could do God knows what to me. Instead, I made a blatant lie and said, No, I have practice. I was hoping my backpack and general university student luck would be enough for me to sell it. 
as I quickly turned and scurried after these student athletes. As I got to the doors, I turned to look at the man. He hadn't moved and he was staring at me. I had never seen that look in a person's eye before. It was so malicious and his smile was replaced by a sneer. As soon as I was inside, I darted towards the largest group of people I could find and I called my sister, who I was living with at the time. I told her what had happened and asked her to come pick me up. I had a sneaking suspicion that the man was still waiting for me to attempt to walk home. She said that she was still driving home from work and was about 5-10 to 10 minutes away, but that she would pick me up right outside the Rex Center doors. It was the longest minutes of my life as I started at the facility doors, waiting for the man to come in to look for me. He never did though. My sister called when she pulled up and I pretty much ran from the building to her car and she hit the lock button as soon as I had got in. The drive home follows my usual walking path for a while, but forks off close to my shortcut through the woods. As we drove past, I gasped and pointed out the indistinct shadow of a man among the trees. I knew that it was him and I knew that he was waiting for me. I never saw the man again, but now whenever it's dark out and it isn't busy hours for commuting, I get off at the next station and walk home from there as I walk beside a very busy street. Even though it's about 5 minutes longer to walk, it's totally worth it. I never want to see those cold blue eyes ever again. This occurred in 2017 and it's 100% true. Due to a multitude of factors including a recent death of a close friend, I was unbearably depressed at this time in my life. For that reason, my family flew across the country to visit me in LA where I live, and we thought it would be nice to visit Catalina Island. When we arrived, it became apparent to us that it was the off season. It was late November and the weather was cold and as a result, the island was nearly empty besides locals and a few straggling tourists such as ourselves. My first priority was to ditch our luggage so we could explore the island. So, we immediately checked into our motel, though that word hardly does the place any justice. I call it a motel because all the doors of the rooms exited to the outside, but in actuality, our room was one of 20-30 to 30 quaint guest house looking buildings, arranged in a sort of horseshoe shape around a walkway, with rooms on either side of the path. The entrance to the motel was essentially one of the points of the horseshoe, and if you walked at dead straight, you would reach the room that we were given, essentially on the corner before you have to go right to go further into the horseshoe. So from our room, one path led back to the street, the other one further into these secluded maze of rooms. Now stay with me. After a day of exploring and having just finished up dinner, it was time for the cold, dark walk back to the room. Catalina Island is a decent distance from the mainland, and let me just say, it gets dark. Similarly dark was my headspace after the dinner conversation took a left hand turn, and my overwhelming depression got the best of me. I pulled my black hoodie tighter over my freezing ears and walked ahead of my parents to the hotel room, telling them that I just needed to go to sleep. And I did immediately. Depression sometimes makes that easy. I was already losing consciousness as they had entered after me, drifting off without so much as a good night. I then woke up to my mom saying my name. A harsh whisper. The room had two beds and my parents' bed was closer to the door and mine was further in the room. My mom's voice cut through the silence again. She sounded concerned for me. I didn't blame her considering my mental state at the time. Groggy, I rolled over. What? I asked. As my eyes adjusted to the dim moonlight coming in through the curtains, I saw her turn to face me. She was surprised to see me in my bed. Her eyes got wide. If I'm in my bed, who is she talking to? We both looked back to where she was previously looking to see a hooded figure in all black standing over their bed. 
Now, I know that you're reading this and knowing a creepy thing is going to happen, but understand how horrifically startling it would be to be on an island in the middle of the ocean and wake up to see a hooded figure looming over you. This moment seemed to last forever. Now, life isn't like movies where characters unleash a blood curdling scream. Sometimes, the only thing that comes out is something panicked and guttural. My mom's words became low and severe as she said my dad's name in a dire voice that I had never heard her use before. And then the hooded figure did something so bizarre and unsettling. It didn't advance towards us, but instead, it crouched in the corner near where it stood. The way that it crouched was so absolutely unexpected, even in regards to this already unexpected situation, that it terrified me. It seemed animalistic. I knew two things. The hooded figure had been standing over us sleeping, and it's not acting in any sort of way that I can understand. As opposed to the infinite moment of this figure standing over us mere seconds ago, the series of events that unfolded when my hulking, ex-military dad woke up happened in an instant. Suddenly, we were out of the door, not knowing which way the intruder went. My mom was screaming, Get him, get him! My dad was running down one path of the horseshoe, further into the hotel, shouting through sheer adrenaline, I'm going to kill you! I ran down the other path towards the street. When I got there, not a sign of the intruder, but it became suspiciously quiet behind me. I ran back to the room to find my dad quietly walking back, his head hung low. He gets really close to me and I hear him say, It's a freaking kid. The explanation that he said was it was some young teen who was tall and lengthy as I am in my 20s, wearing all black including a black hoodie, and he had gone into the wrong room, our room. The one time my parents had just so happened to forget to lock the door. My mom woke up when he had entered and seeing a tall person in a black hoodie, she thought that it was me, assumingly leaving the room in a depressive episode. And when the hooded figure had crouched, that was him realizing his mistake and panicking. He was scared of us. As I got back to the room, my mom walked out and hugged this kid who's now crying his eyes out. I would be too if a massive ex-soldier was sprinting after me with a murder in his eyes. So, this happened in 2016 when I was 17 years old. I was a first year college student in film school. I'm 22 now and I'm Julia by the way. I lived alone in my first ever apartment. It was really small, but I was really proud of my independence for it. Now, I never felt unsafe in this apartment for several reasons. There were multiple gates in the residence that needed to be opened, though, through a code that only people who lived there knew. My door had three different locks, and it was right next to the university, so most people who lived in the neighborhood were college students anyway. Nothing bad had ever happened in the neighborhood before. I've always been very careful with locking the door when I leave my home. I always check twice. I have slight OCD. So this one time, I leave to go to class and I lock my door. But for some reason, I couldn't get the key out of the lock. It was completely stuck, so I went to go get the caretaker of the building to help me. But he wasn't there and I was getting late for class. So I went to class with the key still in the lock. I took off the keychain for her so it wasn't too noticeable. When I got home, the caretaker was back so he came to help me and we couldn't get it out for like 15 minutes until somehow he finally did. He told me that the lock was damaged, but that I didn't necessarily need to change it if I only locked it once instead of twice. I just said okay and that was the end of it. I really wasn't worried because of how safe I felt in this building. Flash forward to about two months later, I was taking out the trash one night around 11pm while on the phone with my sister. I remember telling her that I was taking out the trash and then that I would take a shower afterwards before heading to a party. As I previously said, I always locked the door, even just to take out the trash. But because of my lock being damaged, I only locked it once. 
When I got back to my apartment, I found the door unlocked, which immediately alarmed me. So, I went into the apartment and I locked the door immediately, with three different types of locks. Now, when you walk into my apartment, which is only about 215 square feet, you have the main room in front of you and the bathroom door immediately to your left. I left the bathroom door slightly open, just enough so I could see a man in my shower, turning his back to me. Naturally, when I saw this, I tried to open the door and leave as quickly as I could, except my main lock was damaged from two months earlier, and I couldn't open it no matter how hard I tried. In this moment, all I could think of was the fact that I needed to leave as fast as possible. I jumped out of the window without even really thinking. I figured it was the only solution, except I lived on the second floor, so I completely smashed my ankles on the landing. I started running in whichever way I could and when I got a little bit further from the building, I looked back and a man was there at my window watching me run away. I thought of two possible outcomes. Either the man was going to jump and chase after me, except I wouldn't get far with my twisted ankles, or he would get scared of the height and be locked in my apartment. Thankfully, he picked option two. I went to hide in a bush a little further and I called the police, who arrived in just 10 minutes because I lived close to the station. They had pushed the door open and the man was there just sitting on my couch holding a kitchen knife waiting for me to come back like he didn't think that I would call the cops. They arrested the guy and later told me that he had already been arrested for a series of crimes. They also told me how everything had happened. Like I said, it was a very friendly neighborhood with mostly college students. So we got inside the building by other people holding the door for him. He then heard me telling my sister that I was going to take a shower, which was why he was waiting in the bathroom for me. He had crocheted my lock while I was taking out the trash, and he apparently noticed me on the school campus, and he had followed me home several times before succeeding to actually come in. He stayed inside waiting for me because I had recently changed my phone, and the previous one was still on the table, so he thought that I didn't have a phone with me to call the police. I don't live there anymore, but after that, to get into the building... We all needed ID proving that we lived there. Building IDs were created and we had to scan them every time. And it was the only way to go inside of the building. Nothing bad had happened in the neighborhood after that. And it's back to being very peaceful and friendly. A little bit of background. Around November of 2019, I was running to Target for some cupcake decorating supplies before... Me and my aunt and cousin for lunch later that day at a relatively nice restaurant. This being the case, I was slightly dressed up. Nothing too fancy, but I did look slightly older. It was around 10 in the morning and I was walking to my car from the Target. I had parked pretty far back in the parking lot because I hate fighting for parking spaces. Suddenly, a truck quickly pulls into the parking spot a little bit in front of me and a man gets out. I was very freaked out as he started to walk up to me. He asked if I was single and tells me that I was the most beautiful woman that he had ever seen. I tell him that I'm underage and that I have a boyfriend. I was lying about the boyfriend, to which he replies that he would wait. This dude had to at least be 40. He then goes back into the truck and backs into a spot at the back of the parking lot of this particular shopping center. I was about halfway to my car at this point, but no way in heck was I getting in my car, because he was watching me. So instead, I walked into a nearby frozen yogurt place. I looked visibly panicked, and I quickly grabbed a cup of yogurt, and tried to look natural because this guy was looking at me through the windows. I called my best friend who lives in a neighborhood close to the shopping center, and he quickly said that he would be there soon. Around 10 to 12 minutes later, my friend came and picked me up from the yogurt place. When we pulled out of the parking lot, the dude in the truck had started to follow us. We started to drive around as I texted my aunt that I needed to push lunch back about 30 minutes. My friend and I took a bunch of back roads in the area and drove through some confusing neighborhoods and eventually lost the guy. My friend is an absolute hero and he took me back to my car in the parking lot. 
I was going to run some more small errands before going to lunch, but that obviously didn't happen.